It's Riverhawks Weekly, featuring Grace Bartels, Eamon Bray, Sif Craver, Brady Panay, Coral Vizzy, Jesse James Van Valkenburg, and Mr. Heatley. And now, reporting from our CATV headquarters in the RTBS room, here's Grace Bartels with the week's top stories. Hey Riverhawks, welcome back to the final episode of Riverhawks Weekly. This week we'll have no featured faculty members. Instead, we will be doing senior goodbye messages from the Riverhawks Weekly team. The last high school concert of this school year will take place next Wednesday, May 31st in the high school auditorium at 7 p.m. Come out and support your school's vocalists and musicians. For students who plan on playing a fall sport, physicals will be available to be done in the nurse's office on June 5th. Students taking Regents exams should check their email for the examination schedule. If you plan on taking Columbia Green's Summer College in the High School program, please submit your application to the Counseling Office by Tuesday, June 13th. For seniors who haven't been checking their emails, please look at Mr. Carlson's updates about senior events. Thursday, June 1st, there will be a baccalaureate at the First Reformed Church in Cooksaukee. Please arrive by 6.45 wearing your cap and gown. The ceremony will begin at 7, followed by a reception with flight refreshments. And now, to Brady with the sports report. Over to you, Brady. Thank you, Grace. In Riverhawk Sports and Athletic News, to end the regular season, Riverhawk Varsity Baseball beat Waterville in their senior game and beat Maple Hill to close out the season. The Riverhawks played their first Patroon tournament game against Cairo, where they won 4-1 with a great pitching performance. They then played Catskill a couple days later where they won 8 to nothing, where three pitchers combined for a shutout. Andrew started the game and had a great pitching performance. There were two big home runs from Sam and Nate which pushed the Riverhawks to victory and they were now on to Chatham for the championship game. In the championship game, the Riverhawks battled with the state champions of Chatham but unfortunately came up short. They will now play Glens Falls in their first sectionals matchup. The Riverhawks took care of Glens Falls easily with three big home runs from Christian, Adam, and Sean. Andrew only gave up one hit pitching a gem for the Riverhawks. The Riverhawks then played Cahoes in the quarterfinals where they took a tough loss to unfortunately end their season. Now on to tennis. Your CA Riverhawks tennis team finished the season off strong with a big 4-3 victory over Taconic Hills. The win moved CA into sole possession at third place with an overall record of 8-5. Now on to track and field. The CA girls track and field team stayed undefeated with a big win over previously championship Maple Hill squad and a win over Taconic. It came down to the finals where the girls placed second overall and the boys placed fourth overall. In sectionals, the girls placed third and the boys placed fifth. Now on to JJ with club news and events. Now on the club news and events. Yesterday's color run was a huge success thanks to all who came out in the NHS for sponsoring the event. The Outdoors Club hiked around North South Lake Campground for a total of 8 miles. They began the trip by visiting the observation deck above Catasco Falls. They then traveled the South Mountain Ledge until reaching the Old Mountain House clear. Finally, the club walked around the edges of North and South Lake until returning to the trailhead to catch the bus. Special thanks to Mr. Petro Fieza and Ms. Watson for organizing the trip. Students interested in Outdoors Club next year should go see Mr. Petro Fieza and Ms. Watson for more details. Stay tuned for special messages from graduating seniors of Riverhawks Weekly. Welcome back everybody to uh, another edition of Class or Pass. It's a pretty straightforward game show we have here at Riverhawks Weekly. Uh, our producer, Grace, will give uh, Eamon and myself uh, different scenario situations and we decide whether it is a class, so that's where we do this, or if it's a pass, and then we flip it here. And uh, we're just gonna come up and uh, see what sort of uh, opinions we both have on, on certain things. Uh, the last time we did it was really fun, so uh, this should uh, also be a bit of an adventure, right, Eamon? Yep. All right, uh, Grace, go ahead and uh, give us our first scenario. Okay trying on clothes in a store just over your clothes instead of going into the fitting room or you, just... you just see something you don't want to go in the fitting room so you just put it on over your shirt oh people do that uh like i'm gonna have to go with both on that because it depends on the clothing right if it's like a if it's like a zip pullover then you can try it on but if it's like something where you've got to strip down then... 
I always just go to the other room because if you have, cause like, if you're gonna put, try it on, you always need to put it back in the like area, right? So if you're going to have to walk out all the way over there anyway, just grab a bunch of stuff and go over there. Also, it can be really weird when something very obvious doesn't fit a guy in the store. And he's doing, like stretching it out, trying to put it on outside of fitting room. Wow, you, you, you have a lot of uh, personal experience with that, apparently. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people do really weird stuff in Targets. In Target? Oh, mm. it's always Target. Or Walmart. Or, well, yeah. Walmart's a completely different like thing. Like Target's like here and then Walmart's like over here in terms of the, the scale. Yeah. Um, you're having a picnic and it's a little windy and a few of your rappers actually we'll say like five rappers start blowing away pretty fast but you don't get up to chase them you just let them blow away is that classic pass that's a definite yeah yeah that's a pass okay. litter bugs this is why i joined the force yeah i've never i've never liked like seeing this trash that's seeing like parks or playgrounds and stuff it's always so annoying so you just got to be careful that your food that's still there is, is like covered up before you sprint after the wrappers stuff yeah you don't want ants or bees or other critters getting into your food last thing i want is a squirrel getting into my blt hey you want protein right yeah none of that <laughs> all, all right correct right, down you're in line at the grocery store mm -hmm. and the person in front of you is short three dollars but you only have a 20, so you wouldn't have enough to pay for your groceries, so you don't help them pay. Is that class or pass? You don't help them pay? No, because you wouldn't be able to get your few things that you picked up because you only brought in a 20. And you- But you but you have enough money to go back, but you choose not to because you're already in line with all your stuff. What is the reason for your answer? So my thought is like, if you're in the store buying something and you, don't budget correctly and you don't have like and you're just like a little bit off to buy your groceries just put something back like i doubt like one of the things i don't think the person buying the thing needs every single item there's probably just like a three dollar item they can take off and also if i go into a store and i'm only buying a few things it's usually because i'm buying for friends or i had a very specific like small list when i went in okay and well i'm not going to put something back just for what if their sake. they have a sick baby at home and it's the medicine but the medicine was more expensive than they thought. Come on. So you, you always put these like weird, <laughs> you always these weird circumstances where it's like, get out of this one, genius. The, the, here's the problem, is that I have a baby brother and I remember the pain of like trying to find baby formula during the Oh, there you go. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, on one hand, I can empathize with that, but on the other hand, it's just three bucks. Like I don't, I don't know if I would be willing to risk like all that for three bucks. So just go out to the car and get some, or go somewhere and just like grab three dollars. It's not a lot of money, and it'd be so much more time and effort on my end if I just gave you it. Pay it forward, bro. Pay it forward. That's all I gotta say. That flies with that. Okay, my mind. Pay it forward. This is just gonna get you canceled, so we should. Do that. <laughs> no, no, no. Let me pay. Let me pay. <laughs> no. Pay it forward is a good policy, but only when it directly doesn't mess you up, right? The, Ow. In this situation, by paying it forward, you would directly get in the way of things that you need to do, right? Mm. And I'm, my thought my is like, well, I'm not gonna directly like mess up all my plans if because usually I have like a very tight schedule. I'm not gonna mess it up just because you forgot three dollars. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, the, there you have it. <laughs> yep. All right, next question. You're at a sporting event at one of those arenas, like mm -hmm. City Field or mm -hmm. Pepsi Arena. Everybody leaves their garbage on the ground. It's just like everyone around you is doing it, so you do it too. Is that class or pass? Oh, wow. Having trouble there? Yeah, I've really watched that. Right. That's totally a pass. Yeah, I always, I always clean up after myself. I can't, I can't stand the messy like. Space. Even if everyone around you is not doing it. Oh yeah. Even if if everyone around you is like looting stuff, would you like? Okay. It's just because everyone's doing something bad doesn't mean you should as well. What if you spill like your bag of popcorn? Do you pick up all the popcorn? Well, not each individual <sighs> kernel, but I'll try and grab like chunks and put them back in. Yeah. I think I've done that before. I got a movie theater over one time. I was with my sister and we got one of those large things popcorn. And I forget which one was. One was just elbowed in and fell over. And so I actually like took the time after the movie and just like scoop as much of it up as I could and throw it out. Yeah, even if there's a pile of stuff 
within my general vicinity. So let's say there's a seat next to me or two seats over and there's like a bunch of wrappers on the floor, or, you know, I'll just pick them up. I want to make their, the maintenance uh, workers, I, I want their job to be a little bit easier. I do the same thing if like, I'm walking up here to like a, like a soda can or something on the floor, I'm like, oh, just throw it out. Yeah. Like, the, the people that already feel so much garbage that, why well, not just help them out a bit? Yeah, yeah, make, make, their, make their job a little easier. Hmm. Um, you're on a first date. Ooh, first date. Mm -hmm. And um, you don't know what the girl wants, but you think it's the right thing to order for her. So you order her something for her without asking what she wanted to try and be a gentleman. Is that class or pass? Okay, why? You don't know what they want, and I feel like you're just making a decision to leave them having something that they don't want to eat just because you want to be like, look what gentleman I am. It's like, no, just let them order what they want to order. You're both there to have what you want and just have conversation or more about each other. And it can also leave a bad first impression. Like if you choose something that they dislike entirely and that they would never order, it can lead to a bad first impression. So I don't see the point in doing it. Top dating advice from Amy Bray, right there. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, I like to play it safe, honestly. So. If, for example, I get there before the date, it's usually, you know, two waters preset, ready to go, because we all need water, and, and that's a safe sort of bet. And then you'd also assume that, like, you'd have conversation about the different types of things that you like and don't like before a first date, you know, because it's something you would probably talk to somebody before actually going on that first date. So it's always important to kind of have a little bit of a background. Yeah. All right. That was the last question. All right, thank you so much for uh, joining us, uh, Grace, for those questions. Um, once again, class or pass. This is Mr. Bray. Mm -hmm. Give a wave. Or not. Whatever. Oh, sorry. And, yeah, see you next time. See ya. I'm joined with one of our executive producers here at Riverhawks Weekly, one of our senior members, Grace Bartels. It's funny because the most memorable thing that comes to my head is leaving early every single day. Not because I got dismissed, but because of early dismissal. I'm only here for two hours on these days, and then the other days I'm here for around four, three and a half. So yeah, I don't know why that's the most memorable thing I have, but that's what I got. <laughs> okay. Uh, when you think about coming back in sort of your senior year back in um, September, were there any uh, expectations that you had that were different uh, that you realized towards the end or anything like that? Um, well, the college application process was definitely a lot different than I expected. I expected it to be like I'd be up crying at 11 p.m. every night trying to like finish different essays, but I realized I only have to write one or two, maybe it was two. but. Yeah, that college application process was a lot more smooth than I expected it to be. Well, as somebody pursuing uh, broadcast journalism as their career, I think that it was definitely a great first experience to break me through in like the environment and the field of media and filming and being in front of the camera. So some of my best memories were definitely starting Riverhawks Weekly, getting comfortable in front of the camera, getting comfortable in front of lights that would potentially blind you if you stare in them. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think definitely that. Yeah, I River Hunks Weekly was definitely my most fond memory of this class. And uh, finally, uh, any um, last uh, thoughts or special goodbye messages that you want to say as you uh, prepare to walk across the stage and uh, flip your tassel to the other side of the cap? Yeah, I mean, in specific to this class, I definitely think my, I want to give a shout out to Ms. Raimondo for making me laugh the most during our interview with feature faculty. Uh, Getting ready every morning instead of just throwing on clothes to have to get in front of the camera because I hate wearing makeup and putting clothes on, so I have to do that for this. And overall, I think that Kokosaki Athens has given me a great high school experience and it's going to definitely be bittersweet walking across the stage. All right, thank you so much for talking to us, Grace, and I wish you the very best of success as you get ready to move into your next chapter. Thank you. Bye, guys. Um, this year was really interesting. I didn't think that I would actually enjoy my senior year that much. Yeah, I just thought it was a pretty good year. Really made, get to meet uh, Mr. Heatley, amazing teachers. It was awesome. <laughs> uh, that, makes, that makes me feel good. <laughs>
I'm really planning to, um, when I'm done with school, to get into a college so I can get a communications degree so that I can get into voice acting and other media works. I've been doing the club news and events section of the Riverhawk Weekly and what I learned was kind of take it slow, don't overthink it, breathe if you need to, take a five minute break if you have to. Camera work as a whole, so so making a, okay, so like a film production, so making a script, shot list, angles, movement for camera, all that stuff. If it wasn't for a lot of teachers and friends, I don't know if I would be here right now. And I really appreciate their help and support. They've helped me through rough times, through bad days, and um, definitely the best year I've ever had in school. It was a lot of fun meeting people, working with great teachers, being a part of media production. It's really cool. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for uh, for talking to us, and uh, uh, it's been a pleasure and a privilege having you in uh, as a member of the production team. And uh, we're going to miss you, but we also know that you're going to do some great things. So. Uh, don't be a stranger, and, and thank you so much for being a part of the process. You're very welcome. We're sitting with Eamon Bray, one of our principal uh, technicians. I'll call you our, our first technician for the Riverhawks Weekly Show. So this is my first year here. I just transferred from my old school. And coming into school, I had a lot of expectations that were met far beyond what I thought they were going to be met as. Just because I really enjoyed my old school, you know, because I, I knew more people there. But this school is definitely a better learning environment. and. I just had so much fun in the classrooms and it was unexpected seeing how much like school spirit there was here and seeing the different teams and how everyone interacted. It was such an amazing experience. I learned to be more comfortable from the camera and I also learned like the different difficulties and the different things you need to do behind a camera, like how to call for action, how to call for a slate, and some of the more technical aspects which I usually was not familiar with. And overall, I think it's been a great experience to learn these things and to work on Riverhawk Weekly. More about time management, because when you're editing and when you have a deadline, it's a lot harder and you can't just kind of do everything at the last minute. And it really helped me like get better time management and get better at preparing myself in the morning. Like, okay, today I have this. This is a great school. It is such a nice learning environment. And I think everyone should take full advantages of all the special opportunities you have here, like this class as well as other classes. I'm thankful for some of the teachers I've met and for some of the experiences I've had this school. It's been amazing, and I think that's pretty much it. Sif, talk to me a little bit about your uh, senior year experience um, since first coming in September and some of the lasting impressions of, of being in the media class. Um, not much changed me for my senior year from everything else. I had a video production class last year. I learned a lot from it, but I learned more like this class built on top of that. So, no, I can't mm. anything. No, a lot, a lot of it, because we did up a lot of like bloopers and. Probably me fighting with Amos. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of infighting uh, going on with uh, with Amon. He definitely brought a humor to the to the class. You know, it'll be hard to replicate for sure. Um, I'm looking forward to college actually. After I take a gap year, I'm going to maybe purchase animation. Uh, just some general goodbye thoughts as you uh, get ready to uh, leave your CA life behind. Um, I'd actually like to thank you because you helped me grow as a person, I think, because I would never like sat in front of a camera at the beginning of the year. So, yes, yeah, so thank you. No, thank no, it's, thank, thank you. It's been a pleasure having you. <laughs> Obviously, we wish you the the best of, of luck and success in, in all of your future plans and stuff like that. So thank you so much for talking to us. All right, I'm sitting here with Brady Panay, who's our senior sports producer on the Riverhawks weekly program. I, yeah, I think I've definitely grown since the beginning. I didn't really know much about like what goes behind scenes and like filming and stuff. And I think I really learned like how to operate a camera, how to like speak in front of camera. Cause at first I like, I wasn't like that good at it. So that's where I think I really grew. What are some of your fondest memories from the media class? The good memories are, I like when Mr. Healy does his funny like, voices, they, they get me to laugh. So that's one thing that really was memorable. Well, I'm going to Syracuse the University for sport management. So I hope to, I'm gonna hope to be in that field after college and working like in the management, uh, sports marketing and 
is there any uh, special message or, or thank you that you'd like to give a shout out to maybe somebody or like a group of people who had uh, the biggest impact on you when yes. you look back on your time here at CA? I, first of all, I'd like to thank my family, my mom and dad. They, they've been there for me whenever I needed them to be and just a big thank you to them and to my friends for making high school what high school was. I'd like to thank well, Mr. Heatley for this wonderful class. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not pressuring you to answer that at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mr. Dans, for I had him for two years, and he was a really good teacher, and I liked, I loved his class. Um, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Marr, I had her for Spanish for two years, and she was a wonderful teacher to have, so I'd like to thank her and Mr. Seekamp this year. Yes. Very cool. Well, Brady, I uh, have appreciated uh, your time throughout the course of the year. You've been uh, an awesome member of this uh, class community and an awesome member of the production team, and uh, we are going to miss you, but we know that whenever, whatever you choose to do, uh, you're going to be uh, successful and we wish you all the, the best of luck uh, for all the things that you get involved with as, as the years go by. Don't be a stranger and, and uh, keep up the, the good work yep. that you're doing. Thank you. Yes, it was, it was a lot of fun. And now... <laughs> <laughs> One for the flu for real! Well, well actually, it was not meant to happen. <laughs> we can just, let's just keep it going. We can just cut oh, this. Oh, that was fantastic. Then... You were so confident as well. Wow, well. Uh, here we go. All right, reset. <laughs>